Welcome to the Royal Botanic Gardens and Domain Trust's Autumn YouTube channel. Autumn in all three of the Trust Gardens offers a myriad of adventures for families and people of all ages and nationalities. In fact, Autumn in Your Gardens this year has a magical multicultural flavour. Let's start at the Royal Botanic Garden Sydney with Professor David Mabberley, Executive Director. Well, it's autumn here in the Royal Botanic Garden Sydney and we're standing um, in the Oriental Garden, the HSBC Oriental Garden, which epitomizes in many ways what a botanic garden is about. And it, it's a multicultural entity, a botanic garden. The Oriental Garden itself is concentrated on plants from Vietnam, China and Japan. And it's a small section of the exotic collections which we have in the Royal Botanic Garden. And of course, there's always some plants that are best at certain times of the year, and autumn's no exception. So at this time of the year, particularly striking are things like the japonicas, which are in fruit. Um, but always, any time of the year, the garden is striking for its collection of bamboos and other foliage plants. And we have, of course, a marvellous collection of camellias, which uh, look at their best in spring. Professor Mabberley said there are over 9,000 different kinds of plants growing in the Royal Botanic Garden, Sydney, and 6,000 or more of them are from overseas. The Botanic Garden, in effect, is a kind of arc in that sense, because many plants in many parts of this, different parts of the world are actually going extinct, and some of them survive only in Botanic Gardens. This is an important role for Botanic Gardens internationally. Kate Faithhorn, Director of Public Engagement, explains there's much more to visiting your gardens this autumn. Well, this autumn we've got a fantastic festival planned um, called Autumn in Your Gardens, where we invite the public to come in and enjoy 60 separate different events and activities across the three gardens of the Royal Botanic Gardens and Domain Trust. Um, it kicks off on the 10th of March with a wonderful free day um, called Autumn Vibes. Kate said part of the trust mission is to engage children in all parts of the garden and over the next three months there are plenty of fun activities. We've done something quite special. We've got a garden safari that's going to run across the whole of the three months where kids can go with their parents and find the clues around the garden. We've got um, ten different um, Verging on actually art banners um, that uh, give clues to the kids um, to complete uh, a special quest book. Uh, and it will take probably an hour and a half to two hours. Uh, so that runs for the whole of the festival. But at Autumn Vibes, we've also got a special kids program where we've got um, uh, weaving with different fronds to make baskets and hats. Um, we've also got special walks that the kids can do and some musical items, especially for kids. By enticing people into the gardens for entertainment, the actual purpose is to engage children and adults in looking at the big picture. That is, plant biodiversity and our role in conservation. Here's Fran Jackson. This big old tree is planted right near where the entrance to the gardens used to be from Fig Tree Avenue. And it's now a very valuable conservation resource. We've sent cuttings back to Bermuda to assist with the recovery program for this tree. There's over 3,000 trees in the Botanic Gardens, many of them collected in the 1800s um, are very significant from a heritage and from a conservation point of view. And what's great about the trees in autumn? In autumn in Sydney, there tends to be sort of two things happening. The um, subtropical trees keep their leaves on them and of course the conifers mostly keep their leaves. Um, but we do have quite a big collection of deciduous trees, so your classic autumn colour. We have um, trees from China, and such as the ginkgo and um, aces, which lose their leaves. And we do have um, some interesting, um, colourful vegetation to look at, so it's definitely worth a visit. The garden also grows interesting bush tucker like the finger lime, a native rainforest plant from northern New South Wales and southern Queensland. Here's Professor Mabberley. I just think, for example, of the finger limes, species of citrus, which is wild here in Australia. We actually have more wild species of citrus in Australia than any other country. The finger lime Professor Mabberley mentioned is bush tucker. His Aboriginal education officer, Clarence Slocky, to tell us more. This is a finger lime, so this is one of our native limes that we have. You get bush lemons and a few other things that will uh, start to give you some fruit coming into winter, but this is a beautiful plant to have. It's a great hedge plant if you want to keep people out of your yard. You don't need a fence, you just put one of these in. Really sharp, really hard to get through, but uh, a really beautiful fruit too, which I'll show you in a sec. 
The finger lime can be frozen and defrosted without any damage to the fruit. Take a look at the stunning caviar type of texture. So that's the finger lime. This one isn't quite mature. They'll actually get a bit bigger than that and they will be about the size of my little finger when they're ready to go. You can get all different colours and then you break them open. The presentation of the flesh is what's really significant about this one. Really beautiful little, um, almost look like fish eggs. So they're a great condiment to your fish and a really beautiful lime flavour. The really interesting part about this is when you break it open, the flesh starts to look like tiny fish eggs. So it's a perfect condiment to your fish because when you present, you have this beautiful look about it and the unmistakable flavour of the lime. If you haven't already been there and you're interested in our native plants, autumn is a fine time to visit Australia's largest botanic garden, the Australian Botanic Garden in Mount Annan. Here's Professor David Mabberley. Well, it's very neat that the Australian Botanic Garden at Mount Annan has only Australian plants, but there's an enormous international interest in Australian plants. In fact, there always has been, even from the founding of our garden in 1816 on the Sydney site. But the Australian Botanic Garden has um, wonderful representation of plants which are of economic significance as well as horticultural and botanical significance. Australian chefs are of course making the most of our wonderful bush tucker and owner of Melaleuca restaurant at the Australian Botanic Garden, Adam Williams, is no exception. His take on these national culinary treasures is outstanding. If you visit the garden, it's really worth putting a stopover at the restaurant on your agenda. Adam gives us a glimpse of what's on offer. We use um, items such as the Warrigal Greens, which we utilise um, in place of baby spinach in risotto or in salads. Uh, we also use lemon myrtle and aniseed myrtle. We use the lemon myrtle to marinate our chicken and also produce our lemon myrtle vinegar, which we make our eggs benedict hollandaise with. Uh, we also use the aniseed myrtle in panna cottas for something sweet, a sweet selection on the menu. Adam sources a lot of his bush tucker from the Fruit Loop garden there. It's not full of brightly coloured breakfast cereals, as Dan Bishop, manager of horticulture at the Australian Botanic Garden, explains. The Fruit Loop garden was developed in 2004, and what we've really tried to do is show both the, the Indigenous use of Australian plants, but also how early settlers used Australian plants and the developing bush food industry, which is a growing uh, avenue for both agricultural industry, but also the promotion and understanding of Australian plants. The Fruit Loop Garden is very useful and the Autumn in Your Gardens program is linked to it in a very delicious and enticing way. Andrew Scott, Events Coordinator. And everyone's favourite, the Anonroma Food and Wine Festival, will be taking place right here on Lakeside on Sunday the 14th of April. It's a great opportunity to sample the diverse flavours of the MacArthur region, including bush tucker from our own Fruit Loop Garden. There'll be heaps of delicious wares on offer from local restaurants, wineries and microbreweries, as well as fresh produce, jams and scrummy desserts. There'll be a full program of entertainment throughout the day with live music and kids activities, so bring the family down to your garden this autumn. Apart from the wonderful plants, the Autumn in Your Gardens program at the Australian Botanic Garden includes photography workshops for kids and adults using the garden as inspiration, a sketching safari for established or budding artists and breakfast with the birds. Ranger Ron McPherson said a wonderful way to learn about Australia's largest garden is to go on a tour. Yes, well we do have three different sorts of tours. A uh, new one that's just been introduced is the Autumn Highlights and High Tea Tour. This is where visitors can join a walking tour of the Central Precinct, followed by a fantastic high tea at Melaleuca House. There's no better place to experience the season of autumn than Australia's highest garden, the Blue Mountains Botanic Garden, Mount Toma. Here's Professor David Mabley. Well, the Blue Mountains Botanic Garden, Mount Toma, this is one of its prime times, one of the very best times to visit because we have such good autumn colour. Many of our trees are from the northern climates and they, of course, are deciduous. And they produce beautiful yellow through to red, orange colouring at this time of the year. Maples are particularly striking. But the whole garden is lovely at this time. Horticulturist Ian Hood agrees. Autumn is a really special time of year in the gardens because we've got the temperatures cooling off and it's a great time for taking photos with the uh, light softening and the colour is pretty incredible. Um, we get a far more vibrant colour than we do in Sydney because of the cooler temperatures at night really draws the colour out in the leaves. Autumn in your garden at Mount Toma includes drawing workshops, again using the stunning garden as inspiration and a ceramic traditional teaware exhibition. 
And of course, Toma Roma just can't be missed. Here's Kristen Winder, Manager, Visitor Services. The grand finale for autumn in your gardens at the Blue Mountains Botanic Garden at Mount Toma is Toma Roma. Toma Roma is held on Saturday the 27th of April where the garden's transformed into a market day with regional and local produce for sale. There is also entertainment for the kids with tree tales, performances by the Eaton Gorge Theatre Company, a fun-filled family day out. Autumn's also a really good time to learn about the Aboriginal culture in the region. My name is Brendan Moore and I'm a Biripai man from Taree. Uh, and I'm an horti Aboriginal horticulturalist here at the Blue Mountains Botanic Gardens Mount Toma. It's the Aboriginal Heritage Tour and the tours go from an hour and a half to a full day. Uh, and in that tour you learn about Aboriginal culture and also the culture of the Darug people. Um, you learn about bush medicine um, and, and tools, uh, medicinal use, foods. Well, don't forget to pay us a visit this autumn. If you'd like to find out more about the free Autumn Vibes Festival and Autumn in Your Gardens events and activities, please visit our website, www.rbgsid.nsw.gov.au.